competitiveness and have been huge supporters of me since the time I was little. And so having them there cheering me on is really amazing. So I always, their support is just unparalleled. I just told myself like, it's gonna be over soon, just keep going. So it was good, I'm proud of myself on that. But like I gave it all I had. Open. It's going to be back to the lab and trying to get better. I go to a new age group next year, and so, you know, I'd really like to give myself the best opportunity to try and see what I can do and, and maybe make a big push. So continue competing. Definitely continue competing. That bug has not left at all. <laughs> so this part was originally the play area in the McDonald's. Um, we really like this area for our rig because it kind of represents the play area. It's like an adult play area. I would drive past here and look at these beautiful windows and I would say this is going to be my CrossFit gym. Growing up, we would go to McDonald's in New Mexico every Sunday after ranching for the weekend. We'd drive home. This McDonald's resembles that McDonald's. I, one for one. This was a drive-through. So this was the initial drive-through where um, at one point, I believe McDonald's had three. So there's three windows, drive-up windows. When you tell people that come in, that, hey, this used to be a McDonald's, they're like, really? They're like, okay, I guess I can see this is where like the play area was and you can kind of like imagine it. It was really challenging at first to find people to see that same vision we had. And it got to the point where I end up having to become the general contractor, which I've never done in my entire life. This space in the old McDonald's used to be where we had the soda fountains and where they had the dishwashing stations. Every day, Jonathan and I pinch ourselves. We still can't believe this is ours. It's beautiful. I want any one of our members or even somebody just dropping in to feel like they've come into something special. And so we really try to make this a special place. There you go, Gwen, just hold. There you go, just hold, just hold. Jonathan and Maria have built an amazing community. It's the people you really look up to, and I, I admire them, um, just how strong they are, great people they are. We all truly, genuinely care about each other. It's not just PRing or who's on the whiteboard or who's on the leaderboard, who's number one. Did the uh, change in that grip affect your shoulder? Yeah, I didn't get my gun. I mean, the last thing we want to do is irritate the shoulder anymore. They always push us to do our best. They create a very friendly community, welcoming community, and you can tell that they care about every little detail. First of all, they're characters. I mean, these folks have personality, just personality plus. I love starting something new where there was no business, there was no Arbor CrossFit, to now having an amazing Arbor CrossFit, an amazing community, and we're a staple within our city. It's amazing that we've been able to provide that kind of atmosphere, that feeling of like openness to our members. As an athlete, looking back isn't always easy, but I can't forget where I came from, 
where I've been. Laura Horvath in 2018, her rookie year, she finished second. She's hit some bumps in the road since then, but it's great to see her back once again. When I first stepped into the Coliseum, I was 21. Since then, I've learned a lot about myself. I've discovered what the bird wants from me and what I want to share with the bird. In 2018, people didn't know me or like didn't know who I was. I don't think anyone had any expectations for me, but I had very big expectations for myself. 2018 wasn't luck, felt like I deserved it because all the hard work I put in there. I knew I could do it. I felt like I could do anything that year. I grew so much more in 2019 and 2020 than in 2018 when everything was smooth sailing. At the time when it happened, I was like, this is terrible and like, I'm never gonna recover from this or like, why am I still doing this? But then the years that aren't so good are very important. They don't really look good on your resume, but you need them. As an athlete, we're always in the spotlight. It's not accepted to be at your lowest. Everyone expects you to be at your highest all the time. And I think that's unrealistic because I think it's a process. 2019, throughout the whole season, I feel like I wasn't at my highest. So I just needed to give myself some time and build back up. Twenty twenty one, I feel like I'm back where I was and now I feel like myself again. Yeah, this is my journey and there are highs and lows in it and I accept them. Sharing my life under the Colosseum lights, who you see on the floor, that's me. Laura Horvath, 2018. And the new kid on the f is on. Back in the door. But managing disappointment when the world is looking at you, those are the moments when I learn the most. That's where I grow. Not giving up, remembering why I'm there, whether I stand on that podium or not, that's what pushes me. CrossFit has shaped my journey. It's written into my story. Now a new season is upon us. I know where I've been and I know where I'm going. I know why I'm here and what it takes to stay. No one said that path would be easy, but it's the one I've chosen. It's mine to own. The capital of Ohio is the capital of the CrossFit world. Welcome everybody to the live open announcement of 22.2 from Columbus, Ohio. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram inside Rogue Fitness headquarters. Now, this place has a massive footprint in Columbus and the CrossFit landscape. And the best thing is it started in an affiliate. Back in 2006, forged in the fires of grassroots CrossFit, Rogue Fitness has redefined what it means to be American-made. Where CrossFit united the world with fitness, 
Rogue Fitness has united that fitness, fitness world from the garage gym to the affiliate to Division I strength and conditioning facilities to the floor of the CrossFit Games. And the fact that we get to be here inside where the magic happens, I couldn't think of a better spot. First class organization with first class people that makes first class products and we could not be happier to be here for 22.2. We have a busy afternoon on tap for you here today from Rogue Fitness Headquarters. We're starting with the pre-show presented by Noble. Then the reason we are all here, the open announcement for 22.2, and then not one, but two great matchups. I think we have Laura Horvath, Emma Lawson kicking things off, and then we have the fittest man on earth and birthday boy, mm -hmm. Justin Medeiros, as well as Saxon Pancheck. And after that, we're going to have the cool down show. We'll sit down with all four athletes. And then after that, we'll do a live podcast on the Cross the Games podcast on Cross the Games YouTube channel for those of you around the world can join us for a little conversation. A lot going on in the competitive world of CrossFit, and there's a lot going on in the community at large. And for more on that, let's bring in Kayla Banfield. You know it, Sean, there is a lot going on in our community, and one of those things is our Level 1 courses. Next weekend, there are 16 in-person Level 1 courses, including Casablanca, Morocco, and Florence, Italy. Scan the code or head to the website to find a course near you. Now, for those of you who don't want to travel, we have plenty of online courses for you too, including our nutrition course. We all know the importance of nutrition, so to make the most of your workout, head to crossfit.com slash nutrition. Now, before we move on, I wanted to say a special thank you to our affiliates. It's no secret the last two years have been incredibly tough, especially on small business owners. So to our affiliate owners, we see you and we thank you for continuing to spread the magic of CrossFit. This next story is on a very special member of our community who, despite all odds, never gave up. So the reason I did the Open last year is partly because the gym has such a good community and it makes me feel good to work out with those people. Work has been really stressful over the past couple of years and working out is a nice escape from that and the Open just gave me sort of something to work towards. I work in intensive care, um, I'm an intensive care nurse. I've witnessed a lot of death, more death than, than I probably ever wanted to see. Um, yeah, work's been busy, it's been full on. We normally have the capacity to take 20 ventilated patients in work, and I think at the height of the pandemic we had 48 ventilated patients. You know, when you have such a high pressure job, you need something away from your job as a sort of release. Um, weightlifting in particular is that for me, and obviously there's a lot of weightlifting in CrossFit. It was hard to sort of come home from work and not do anything and go straight back into work the next day. And I think that release from working out makes a difference to sort of how my energy levels in work and sort of how I get through my day in work. I was diagnosed with PTSD last year after just sort of what I'd witnessed throughout the pandemic. And I struggled with um, overstimulation. So if there was a lot going on in a class, like if, because obviously the classes, there's other people there, you're all working out, there's music on, and I just found it a bit overstimulating. So I started doing one-to-one -one sessions with my coach, Sarah. She's the lead coach for, for Arch One. She does all of the programming and I've worked with her ever since. And it was just sort of building it back up again to get to the point where I could perform in those situations. Yep, it's definitely something, I'm definitely going to do the open. I'll do it in a way that works for me and everyone's super supportive of that. Um, and I'm looking forward to it, yeah. I'm looking forward to see how it compares to COVID open last year. And I'm looking forward to sort of compare it from where I am now, kind of to where I am next year as well. I'm Shannon McPhee at CrossFit Glasgow and I am ready for the open.
I personally have been doing CrossFit for over a decade and I'm still so incredibly inspired by our community and their individual journeys. If, like me, that story resonated with you, but unlike me, you've never visited a CrossFit gym, what are you waiting for? Jump online and find your local affiliate. One of the best things that I love about our CrossFit community is how they come together when times are tough. An example of that is CrossFit Rocks, or Rocks CrossFit, should I say, in Brisbane, Australia, who've been affected by the recent flooding. Affiliates have rallied together, sharing equipment, doing the open together, and even sharing beers, despite their building being underwater. If you want to help out, the Australian country manager has set up a GoFundMe. We all want to help the affiliates in Australia. And for our affiliates all over the world, we have the Affiliate Partner Network. And for more on that, Derek is with our guests. Uh, affiliates offer world-class coaches, but they also get world-class perks. So we're gonna talk about the Affiliate Partner Network. I've got Gary Gaines and Mike Marone, but first, we wanna talk about what we just saw. What is it like, Gary, for you seeing affiliates being able to help others? Yeah, I think everybody in this room understands the power of an affiliate um, and the magic of CrossFit that's fueled and created every day inside those four walls, and I'm just so glad to be a part of the community. Yeah, no doubt. The Affiliate uh, Partner Network, just Mike, what is it? Yeah, so at its core, the Affiliate Partner Network is an online hub providing our affiliate owners with consolidated access to some of our most trusted partners. But uh, you know, I think the real benefit or perk, as you said, is that nearly every single partner we have on the platform offers some type of exclusive affiliate-only pricing, uh, you know, preferred pricing and discount. You know, additional margins on revenue sharing opportunities, as well as some pretty cool, uh, you know, member acquisition or attention programs. And, you know, what I'll say is, you know, what I tell everyone, the APN is designed to help our affiliates thrive. Mm -hmm. You know, and it does this by allowing our, our affiliate owners to cut costs, operate more efficiently, you know, and establish some additional revenue streams, as well as, again, you know, cultivate programs that help the community here. Yeah. Um, just talk about. When it, got, when it got started, how did the APN get started? Yeah, I mean, we deployed this crazy strategy and we thought asking the affiliates what they wanted would be worthwhile. And they responded and said, you know, leverage your global brand and get us preferred pricing in uh, areas of the business and segments of the business that could help us uh, run more effectively and efficiently. And that's what we did. Mike, when we look at partners, just how many partners do you guys currently have? And I heard that there's some uh, partnerships in the work coming up. Talk about this. Yeah, definitely. So we currently have over 20 partners that cut across a myriad of product lines. Everything from, you know, the, the not so sexy but important uh, cleaning supplies and operational supplies with Good Earth that, uh, you know, have quite honestly, you know, better pricing compared to Amazon and Costco. We have AED and uh, CPR training through pro trainings. We have some, you know, really robust retail, uh, as, you know, additional retail opportunities through O2, Thorn, um, and some other brands as well. You know, there's, there's really something for everyone here, whether that be, you know, crossover symmetry on down. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited today to announce, uh, you know, the, the launch of five new partners within the APN. Those being, you know, kind of first and foremost, uh, what now is the uh, official mobility partner of CrossFit, uh, GoWad, which will be offering a free premium subscription to all affiliate owners. And I think we'll see some good things coming down the pipeline with members as well. Uh, as well as uh, Bear Complex, which I think, you know, is pretty internationally renowned with uh, some additional retail opportunities for, uh, for gym owners there to serve their members, as well as some additional discounts. We also have a Hybrid Athlete Foundation, which is uh, going to be launching helping our affiliates to understand how to monetize the closed hours of their gym. I think it's going to be a phenomenal service globally that uh, is going to be offered, as well as kind of two, uh, two new ones to the sphere, uh, Creatures of Habit as well, and uh, Healthy Truth within the retail space. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be seeing others coming around, uh, you know, AEDs, and uh, I do want to mention, you know, globally as well. Uh, we're going to be launching pretty robust international uh, focus partners as well. Sounds pretty exciting for the affiliates. Last question for you, Gary. What kind of impact has this already had for the affiliates? A significant one. We, the response has been extremely positive. We've had about 1,200 affiliates access the APN. Um, and when you annualize the savings, it's about $2,200. So really powerful. Um, helps them you know, lower their expenses and operate more effectively. All right. We're getting set for 22.2. Later on in the show, we're going to send it back over to Chase and Sean. Another one of the great brands that affiliates can save on is uh, Whoop. The official wearable of CrossFit, they provide you daily personalized insights and analytics on strain, recovery, and sleep. And now affiliates are using that data to help better serve their athletes.
CrossFit Winter Park is just a huge community of, of people with like-minded goals. We're all on the same journey together, trying to be fit, be healthy, be well. You're sweating it out with friends next to each other and kind of grinding through things. CrossFit Winter Park really just brings people together. One of the first things I noticed coming into CrossFit Winter Park was the community of WHOOP members. There was a lot of people who have WHOOPs, so it's cool to see their strain, their recovery. It's helped me initiate a dialogue between myself and members on what's going on outside of the gym. It's starting conversations of what could contribute to poor HRV or maybe more green recovery days. It's creating a connection to things that I don't see on a regular basis. It's another data point, another way to you know, give more information to our members. Like we're here to educate them about fitness, about lifestyle, about sleep, about you know how hard they're working or if they're not working hard enough. It makes me a bigger part of their overall health journey in terms of making sure they're sleeping right, making sure they're eating right. So now they have good data to back it up and they can actually see what is actually impacting their daily lives and performance. So I was about a month into being here at CrossFit and I had a friend who was wearing a WHOOP and everyone was just talking about the stats on it. There's a lot of things that we can share and information that we talk about. I mean, it's a community to begin with. You know, these classes, it's our fitness family. WHOOP just adds a layer to that beyond just talking about some of the basic things we do daily. You know, waking up and seeing the reds isn't a fun thing to do, uh, and that is inevitable after a night of drinking alcohol. So I've made some uh, some great <laughs> behavior changes using Whoop. You know, it's it's not just a gym; it goes well beyond the four walls, uh, and and Whoop is a big part of that because we can have people see what they're doing. The other 23 hours of the day is also affecting their their lives. It's not necessarily about what they're doing inside the gym as much as it is what they're doing outside of the gym. So it makes it a great place to connect with people, to improve every day, and to kind of connect with other like-minded people who are there to improve as well. You're a coach and when you have concrete numbers when dealing with your athletes, it really helps you be a better coach. Oh, it's a game changer because a coach-athlete relationship is like asking your significant other what's wrong. I'm fine, red flag. <laughs> but now we actually get some data to go with our athletes so we can see how the recovery, their sleep, and their strain is on a day-to-day -day basis. So having those numbers is invaluable. Now, coming up in a little bit, we're going to see four of the best athletes in the world throwing down in 22.2 right out there on that floor that, like just about everything else we need to pull off one of these announcements, has to be built from scratch. For more on that, here's Caleb Anfield. I'm standing by with James Isley from Surface Co, the newest flooring partner of the CrossFit Games. James is also an affiliate owner. It's very good to see those two worlds coming together. James, what does it mean to be the newest partner of the CrossFit Games? Yeah, it means a lot. I've been an affiliate owner for six years now, and we've been using this game system that we're using today. We're extremely happy with it. Now that I've started at Surface Co, we're really excited to offer a superior surface solution for the fittest athletes on earth at such a huge stage. Obviously, it's really cool to have your flooring at events like this, but what does it mean for affiliates all over the world? Yeah, currently we've been offering Surface Solutions for decades, but now with SurfaceDirect.com, it's going to open up to our community members, uh, our affiliate partners, and they can, we can start educating them and getting the proper surfaces in their facility. Thanks for your time, James. Thank you. Surface Co. is the official flooring sponsor of the CrossFit Games. You can save 22% throughout the Open by using the code OPEN22. Head to surfacedirect.com or scan the QR code. We are officially one week into the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games season, and that means we have actual scores to talk about. Let's take a look at the top scores, starting with the individuals from 22.1. Mal O'Brien takes it for the women 13 rounds plus. <laughs> And then Victor Lundahl, his best ever finish in the Open, 390 reps. But Mal O'Brien is picking up right where she left off. With a little bit better because, you know, she burst onto the scene with her 21.1 score, getting fourth in the world 
as a teenager. So like, how about I get first in the world? <laughs> what I thought was fascinating too is that her score of 392 was only two reps better than Victor's score of 390. And if the question is, where'd this guy come from? Well, he's the 2021 fittest man in Sweden. So it's no surprise to see a score like this come from him. A lot of times in week one, you're like, okay, was this just you know a soft pitch down the middle for this athlete? No. I'm excited to see what Victor does in week two to build off what he did in week one. Let's take a look at some of the other scores, starting with the age groups. Now, I was told that Kristen Holter retired from individual competition, but there she is with 372 reps. That was good enough for eighth in the world. Listen, Kristen, Brett Favre this thing. <laughs> put away the green and yellow, put on the purple and gold, and let's get back into competition. Eighth in the world after retirement. This is one of the best off seasons she's ever had. Go to the adaptive divisions. Some very impressive scores put up by those athletes. Tom Miazga is in the seated with hip division, and he just demolished this thing. 447 total repetitions. I mean, there was no one close to this guy. But here's what's wild. Over across the leaderboard, people were separated by singular reps. In this division, his score was 20% better than the second place athlete in his division. This is one of the most dominating performances we've seen in any division. And Tom is one of our correspondents for our CrossFit Games studio content. And now is the time to pay attention to that, that we are in the season. And you can do that by downloading the CrossFit app or going to the CrossFit Games YouTube channel for Game Central, inside the leaderboard, and the triplet for all the bets that's going on in the community. Something really cool that went on in the community was last week. It took place in New York. It was one of the best matchups that we saw. It was the FDNY against the NYPD. The biggest platform we could have is NYPD versus FDNY. And we're going to throw down. We're going to go see who's the fittest first responder in New York. These are the major leagues of the, both departments in the world, you know. I hope NYPD's ready, man, because I know my guys. The first responder community is continuously facing the unknown and the unknowable, and CrossFit best prepares you for that. If if, and it's a very huge if, our brothers and sisters in the FDNY should happen to pull off a win tonight. I can speak for all the police officers that are currently at CrossFit Gantry, there will be no retribution. I can't speak for the other 35,000. You know, I started competing in CrossFit competitions. Thought it'd be a good idea that the FDNY have their own CrossFit team. With the goal in mind going against NYPD CrossFit. I just took it on my own to uh, just shoot out a general email to, to main site. And what I said was, what do you guys think about having a CrossFit Games FDNY versus NYPD? Question mark, question mark, question mark. And then uh, from where we are now, from then it's just, it's just grown. So tonight we have the, the first responder throwdown. I'm super excited about it. Uh, I'm the primary team physician for both groups, um, and my health system, Northwell Health in New York, is the primary sponsor of both groups. And through sponsoring both groups, I've helped bring the two groups together. The event is important because CrossFit is important in these communities. By having a more healthy first responder community, we have a safer community at large, which is really important. NYPD throwdown, finally. Throwing down with my coworkers, Northwell Health, people that work in my office. Woo! I'm hoping that what ultimately comes out of this, apart from an NYPD victory, is that people see that their first responders are taking care of themselves because the public needs to see that we're in the physical shape to take care of them, to serve them, which is what we're sworn to do. It's really preparing you for the unknown, right? And with us, when we come into work every day, we don't really know what the, the call is going to be for or, you know, uh, how your physical fitness or uh, your mental wherewithal or, you know, being able to endure something is going to come into play, right? So 
You know, CrossFit prepares us for that. You know, for me being in this profession and uh, doing this, the, the goal is to go home at the end of the day and, you know, protect civilians if they're in need. As much as this is about 22.1 and fitness, and it is about camaraderie. You know, at the end of the day, we have the two most dangerous jobs in the city. We risk our lives every single day for the people of the city of New York. When one of us falls, we come together. Like any siblings, we do fight over the remote, but we're one big happy family, no matter what you do. I'm happy that everybody came out, and then um, we got the W, Team Red. <laughs> you got Yankees, Red Sox, you got Ohio State, Michigan, and you have cops and firefighters. I don't care what those guys are doing, they're going to be competing at it. I, but the, the big message there is that, you know, you have a, you know, first responders mm -hmm. to protect and serve. And what better way to get yourself prepared for that than a methodology that prepares you for the unknown and unknowable. So whether you're red, blue, we all bleed CrossFit. Yeah, and big thanks to Ron Perez and Ricardo Roman for putting that together. And big thanks to Noble for providing shirts and gear for all of the athletes who took part in that. And you can head to nobleproject.com slash open to shop the Trainer Plus, the newest addition to the line of Noble Performance Trainers. Order your pair today and get a free pair of performance socks with a purchase of the Trainer Plus when you use the code in the open at checkout. The offer ends on March 15th while supplies last. We have a lot of fit people in the house tonight, but we have a guy who is extremely fit in the house as well. Matt Fraser is here. He's going to be joining us in the booth later. He also has the honor of disclosing 22.2. His resume is second to none, and right now he is with Derek Forrest. You can't say it enough, the five-time champ, Matt Fraser, is in the house. <laughs> Matt, you, you won the Open four years in your career, four times in your career. How is it different training for the Open compared to training for the regular season? Uh, you know, I think it depends on what, what your fitness goals are and what your priorities are through the season. So, you know, if, if the Open is, is what you're training for, you know, you can, you can modify your training leading up to it so you have the best, best performance possible. But, you know, for myself, later in my career, you know, I train through the Open, you know, full training day, day before, workouts prior to, um, you know, because my goal was the games. But, you know, so it depends where you are in the season and what, what your end goal is. For the everyday CrossFitter, someone like myself, how would you help those of us prepare for the Open? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in that role now, coaching other people, and, you know, I'm always recommending don't rush into it. You know, just because the Open announcement is today doesn't mean you need to hit it tonight or tomorrow. Take a day, practice the movements. You know, last week we saw new movement standards, so, you know, touch that movement a couple times, get familiar with it so it's one less thing you have to think about when you're executing on the workout. You can just focus on the effort you're putting in. Last week, Tia Clear Toomey announced 22.1. You have the luxury and the pleasure to announce 22.2 to the community. How do you feel having that honor? You know, it's great. You know, it's, uh, it's a little bit different being on the other side of the barricade and watching uh, my former competitors and friends uh, do the workouts. But, you know, the transition was a lot easier, a lot more natural than I was anticipating. I thought it would be a little bit tough, but I'm more than happy being on that side. <laughs> I, I, I totally understand. Finally, for you, you are a GoWad athlete. So how does the GoWad app help you with your training in your everyday training? It was one of those things that when, when I, I started using the app before I started working with them, um, but it was just like anything else I do, you know, I'm not trying to figure it out for myself. If I can seek out a professional that has the answers already and I can just focus on executing on it and not, you know, figuring out what works, what doesn't work. Um, so, you know, I, I used it in my training every day, multiple times a day, before training, after training. It's just, it's simple. You put in the movements you're doing and it gives you a protocol. All right, once again, ladies and gentlemen, the five-time champ, Matt Fraser. We have two really good matchups tonight featuring four athletes who are really the future stars of this sport. Yes, but the future is now. I mean, the oldest competitor we have 
today is 25, <laughs> 24, 22, and 17 years old. But these are not just the future, but they are paving the way for the generation that we have now competing and ones that are looking up to them in the sport. And the first matchup we have features one athlete who is trying to follow in the footsteps of another. Here's a closer look at the matchup between Laura Horvath and Emma Lawson, presented by Noble. It's always a good idea to set a good example. It's also a good idea to follow one. Laura Horvath has been doing the former since she first arrived on the CrossFit landscape in 2016. Over in lane four is Laura Horvath, the youngest female competitor in the field, just 19 years old. At 19 years old, she finished seventh at a loaded Meridian Regional. Despite missing out on a spot at the games, it was clear that she was going to make it very soon. Just two years later, Horvath not only made it to Madison, she finished second. And the new kid on the block is here to stay! While Horvath would return to the games in 2019 and 2020, she failed to duplicate the success she had as a rookie. That would change in 2021. The fittest woman in Hungary put together an impressive performance that was overshadowed by just one person, Tia Toomey. Horvath's second career silver medal solidified her as a potential heir to Tia Toomey's crown. Meanwhile, Emma Lawson is looking to establish herself as the next Laurel Horvath. At just 17 years old, Lawson is well on her way to doing just that. She started last season off by finishing 15th in the World Wide Open. She would then take ninth at the Atlas Games semifinal. Despite missing the opportunity to compete at the games as an individual, Lawson took full advantage of the opportunity to compete as a teenager. She would finish first in the 16 to 17 year old division. In 2022, Lawson has her sights squarely on the individual competition in Madison. Laura Horvath set a good example for Emma Lawson on how to do that. So far, Lawson is following it. It may only be a matter of time before she's ready to lead. All right, I'm joined by Emma Lawson and Laura Horvath. Emma, I want to ask you this. You crushed it in the 16 to 17 year old division last year by winning it. What are your expectations as you head into 2022? Um, you know, I just really want to. This is a great experience every year. Um, you learn something new. Um, so, yeah, I'm just coming into the season wanting to do my best and yeah. Laura, for you, you hopped back on the podium last year. You finished second. What is it going to take to track down Tia Claire to me? I think it's going to take some hard work, which I've been doing lately, so we'll see what's going to happen. All right. Well, good luck to you guys tonight. They're getting set to throw down in 22.2 in just a few moments. We'll send it back over to Sean and Chase. Anytime you make the jump from the teenage division to the individual competition, that is a whole new ball game. But it seems like Emma Lawson is poised to do just that this year. Why do you think she can be successful? Because she won't be the first one to do it. It was uncharted territory about three or four years ago when the teen athlete and champ Haley Adams was trying to make it into individual competition, and it took her a couple years to do so. But as to last year with Mal O'Brien and Emma Carey, showing not only can you make that jump in a year, but you can also have success on the main floor at the CrossFit Games. So for Emma Lawson, I think having those athletes do that before her should build her confidence and her ability to do that. With her off season, especially what we saw what she did in Dubai, I think she's poised to make the jump to individual competition. Meanwhile, Laura Horvath had one of the most dominant second place performances we've ever seen at the games last year and was overshadowed by Tia Toomey winning her fifth and the resurgence of Annie Thoris' daughter. But it's very clear that she is back to where we expected her to be after 2018. 2018 was a, a magical year for Laura. Rookie season, gets second place, has two tough years in 2019 and 2020. But what I thought those years did for her is lay the foundation of what she did in 2021, making it back into second place. And as you said, one of the most dominant performances aside from Tia. But really, if it wasn't for Tia last year, it would be the most dominant performance we've ever seen at the CrossFit Games. And a healthy Laura Horvath, a hungry Laura Horvath, and a confident Laura Horvath is gonna be a dangerous one in Madison. And it will be fun to watch these two athletes throw down in the first of our two matchups in 22.2. The two of them stood on the CrossFit Games podium last year in their respective divisions. The best open finish for Emma Lawson came last year, 15th in the world. Laura Horvath was 10th back in 2020. That is the tale of the tape presented by Monster Hydro.
22.2 is presented by Monster Hydro, hard charging hydration. Learn more by scanning the QR code on your screen right now. It's going to be a fun afternoon. We are almost to announcement time. And don't forget, we have two matchups, Laura Horvath, Emma Lawson, and then Justin Medeiros in Saxon Panchik. What do you find the most intriguing about both of these matchups? I mean, you have some of the fittest athletes on the planet here in Columbus, Ohio, <laughs> to go head to head in front of a live audience. We got spoiled last week in Boulder, Colorado. We have a bigger crowd here at Rogue Fitness. But if you're talking about some of the elite in the world, Laura Horvath and Emma Lawson is one is there, one is on her way. And in the second matchup, birthday boy Justin Medeiros, the fittest man on earth in the house. <laughs> and then Saxon Pancheck made the move, and now he's also wanted to make another move. And that's from that fifth place position last year to on top of the podium this year. We'll and, see. And then coming up after that, we have the Cool Down Show, which you will be hosting. What can fans expect to see on that? Well, we're going inter to interact with everybody here in the crowd, so have your questions ready. We'll have all, all four athletes for the show. And then after that, we will go to the CrossFit Games YouTube channel where we will do a live podcast with all of our athletes to connect more with you guys watching from around the world. So bring your questions. Tune in after the Cool Down Show. All right, let's get this thing going. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the live announcement of 22.2. The 22.2 announcement is sponsored by Monster Hydro, the official energy drink of the Noble CrossFit Games. Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. And Woo, the official wearable of CrossFit. Week one of the Open took us up a wall and over a box. Week two takes us to Columbus, Ohio. Four of the best in the world will be the first to take on the next challenge. The defending CrossFit Games champion goes up against a rising star with a familiar name. And the younger Patrick shining inside the Coliseum. The second fittest woman on earth takes on a teenage champion who looks to make her mark on the individual competition. It doesn't matter where you wound up after 22.1, because this week, we all get another chance. The live announcement of 22.2 is next. is leading the way for the younger generation, your 2021 fittest teen on earth, Emma Lawson. And go. 
going head to head with Emma is two times second fittest woman on earth, all the way from Hungary, Laura Horvath. All right, these two ladies are getting set to throw down in 22.2 in just a few moments, but I got a couple questions. Emma, I want to ask you this. This is your first open announcement ever. What are the nerves like going into tonight? <laughs> I definitely have some nerves. <laughs> first time doing this, but uh, I'm super excited to throw it on beside Laura. So. Laura, for you, also your first announcement, but you're doing it in front of a live audience. What is it like for you tonight being able to throw down in front of everybody here? I'm super excited to throw down with all these guys here. I only been doing open announcements in my yeah. I only been doing uh, open and open workouts in front of my own community, so I'm super happy to be here and with the whole CrossFit community or like part of it. Awesome. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun tonight, but first, we've got to introduce what Open Workout 22.2 is, and for that, we're going to send it back over to Kayla. Last week, we had a very special guest announce our workout, and this week, we have another familiar face. For the announcement of 22.2, I give you five-time fittest man on earth, Matt Fraser. All righty, Matt, it's the moment of truth. Are you ready to open the envelope? There we go. All right. Open workout 22.2 .2 is four time, a couplet of deadlifts, and what well, everyone <laughs> loves, bar facing burpees. <laughs> Starting at one rep each, add one rep per round until you reach 10 reps for each movement. Then re return back down the ladder to one. There's a 10 minute time cap. So Matt, what are our initial thoughts on that workout? Oh man, <laughs> I think I think this one it could be a trap because you know you see you see one up to ten, yeah. and so you think it's 55 reps of each, but you have to keep in mind this is a 10 minute AMRAP, so pace accordingly. But after you get to that 10, you get to you get to jump back down, have a little bit uh, smaller set. So I think I think this one could be fast. It's a lot of hinging, but I I think especially the, the group that's going tonight, I think they're fully capable. It's going to be a fun one. Sean and Chase, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Matt took the words right out of my mouth. I see that and go, oh, that's not that bad. And then I hear Admiral Akbar go, it's a trap. I don't know, Sean, what do you think about deadlifts? <laughs> I'm, I'm it doesn't in. matter what you think. We're doing 100 of them. <laughs> At 225 and 155 with bar facing burpees, I think I need some new nobles because I just threw up on my shoes <sighs> when that event got announced. Man, I mean, if you know anything about my lack of athletic You love prowess. a good deadlift. Love a good deadlift. <laughs> Thank you so much for this one. Man, this is going to be, this is a, oh, man, this is a nasty one. This well, is going to be rough. we know the description. This is what it's going to look like. CrossFit Games Open Workout 22.2 .2 is a couplet of deadlifts and bar facing burpees. This workout features an ascending rep scheme, starting at one repetition of each movement and building to 10 repetitions of each movement. Then, the athlete will complete a descending ladder back down to one repetition of each movement. There is a 10 minute time cap on this workout. Your score will be the total time taken to complete the workout. If you do not complete the workout, then your score will be the total number of repetitions completed before the 10 minute time cap. For the official movement standards, as well as information about each division and workout variation, download the corresponding 22.2 .2 scorecard and workout descriptions from games.crossfit.com. So there you go team. 22.2 .2 is a simple couplet. Deadlifts and burpees. We're ascending on the deadlift. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. You get the idea. If you make it to the top, you get a chance to head all the way back down. The weights for this workout are 225 pounds for the gentlemen and 155 for the ladies. The real challenge, though, is that you only have 10 minutes. 
Right away when I look at this, what jumps out at me is midline stabilization. The ability to hold the positions as you go through the workout. I know for a fact the low back, the glutes, and the hamstrings are going to be on fire. So for the deadlift, what I'm going to do is I'm actually planning on doing smaller sets as the reps get higher. So probably breaking it up like four and three on the round of seven. Because the goal for me is to see if I can't keep moving throughout the entire workout. Remember, it's only 10 minutes. So every second that I rest is literally taking away from me being able to do work. When I think about the burpee, I'll probably start immediately jumping the feet back, jumping the feet in, and then over the barbell. But I know my heart rate is going to go through the roof, and I can't sustain that pace for 10 minutes. So what I'll do is I'll start to own the middle, meaning I'll crawl my way down, crawl my way up in order to keep moving for the full 10 minutes. Keep in mind, CAP program is designing lesson plans for the affiliates. So if you're an affiliate owner or a coach, check those guys out and see if they can't help you execute this for your classes. I'll be looking for you on the leaderboard. We mentioned it last week, but we can't say it enough. Pay attention to the workout standards. And I'm speaking from experience because I got no repped in a wall walk last week in 22.1. It wasn't fun. Learn from my mistakes. Don't be like me and pay attention to our standards. Now, as you know, there is a second matchup taking place later on. And Derek is standing by with our men. You guys just saw the workout. Justin, want to start with you. What will your approach be tonight? Yeah, man, I think I'm just going to try to like start fast in the beginning try to stay fast through the middle and just finish fast. Saxon, <laughs> for you, what is your mindset in, a, in this type of workout? Yeah, I think it's um, who can hold on longer and um, smooth is fast, fast is smooth. All right. Good game plans for both of you guys. We'll see if it pays off. But you can't have a great workout without a great warm-up. These tips for 22.2 are presented by Arosti. All right, week two is here. Looks like we're gonna have a lot of hip hinging, hip extension, and potentially stress on your low back. So if those are areas of concern for you, we're gonna give you a couple of tips and tricks to help make sure you can move safely through these movements. Keep in mind, this is not meant to diagnose nor treat any specific conditions, just to help you move better. The wall stretch is great for identifying imbalances from the left and the right, which causes a lot of low back issues. And so if one side's tighter than the other, you'll know it right away. You wanna really focus on opening up your hips, stretching your hip flexors, so the quad muscle, the hip flexor, the psoas, to make sure you take the stress off the spine to open up those hips, get better hip extension, and allow for a better workout. Arasti is the official rapid recovery provider of CrossFit and has been trusted by games athletes for over a decade. So if you need additional help recovering from an injury, identifying what's causing your pain, or just want to move better, then Arasti is here to help. I've been lucky enough to be at some events where a Rosti is there treating the athletes. They actually helped me work through a shoulder injury that I had a few years back. And what's cool about those guys is that they're in the community, they're in the gyms, like they know what you're doing, so they know exactly what you need to get back to 100% and back inside the gym as fast as possible. And it's not just knowing what you're doing, but knowing what you want to do, whether it's get back in the gym, get back in your affiliate, or get back on the competition floor. So I think it's always great to have a partner in the recovery area that knows exactly what your goals and, and aspirations are, and that's what you get with Arosti. The same effective and efficient Arosti treatment is available nationwide through Arosti Remote Recovery. Now 50% off for the CrossFit community. Scan the QR code on your screen to schedule your treatment today. Great group to have in your corner. Another great thing to have in your corner, a really good coach, and that's exactly what Justin Medeiros has and Adam Neifer, and he is with Caleb Anfield. All righty, Adam, how do we think Justin's going to go? I mean, how do you think he's going to do? I think he's going to crush it. How do you guys think? <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> he's going to do awesome. Adam, not only are you a coach to Justin, you're a 12-year affiliate owner of CrossFit Fort Vancouver. How does it compare coaching elite athletes and then the rest of us? Man, anytime you get to be a coach and, and somebody entrusts you with uh, their journey in fitness, it doesn't matter if they're, they're a first-time CrossFitter or they're out here competing on the highest stage. It's, uh, it's not a privilege, so it's awesome. And there's no better time in affiliates than the Open. I absolutely agree. Last question, why do you think that you and Justin work so well together? Oh man, Justin, he's, he's humble. Um, man, the guy is fired up and hungry to get better every day, and I love that, so it's, uh, it's the best job in the world. Great, thank you much, so much for your time, Adam. All right, the final preparations are underway, so for the call, let's send it up to Sean and Chase. 
now that you've gotten over the disappointment that you're going to have to deadlift <laughs> and that you've looked at this workout a little bit, what's your recipe for success? Well, I got a few things to look at, especially if you're looking to finish this workout in the time cap, is that you have really two parts of this. And it's negative splitting the deadlifts is huge. And what I mean is that not going out of the gates too hot as the reps ascend. But when you crest the top, this is like that roller co coaster. We click, 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 click. <laughs> and then it's down we go on the backside. And that's where you want to put on the gas. Don't lose time on the burpees, so don't over-race them in the beginning, but don't overpace them because there's a lot of reps and a lot of time can be lost. And then embrace the darkness. At the end, it's going to get brutal. It's going to get rough. But with this weight, these athletes and bar-facing burpees, they'll be able to finish as fast as they want to. It is go time. Down to the competition floor. Head judge Adrian Bosman to get us kicked off. Twenty two point two deadlifts and bar facing burpees. We're going up and then we're going down. Ten minute time cap here. That's right, you're at the base of the roller coaster. You just pulled out of the station and now we're starting to climb. We're getting higher and higher. One to ten. Now Sean, this isn't the first time. We've had a rep scheme like this, one to ten. In fact, we had something similar, I believe it was in 2018, where we had the dumbbell squats and bar facing burpees. And if anybody remembers, once you got to the round of seven, it got really, really nasty. Now with this one, we're tacking on a nine to one on the backside. So like I said, it's be very smooth at the start, efficient like you see with Laura Horvath and Emma Lawson. And really, again, this is gonna be a back half race. Both Lawson and Horvath are already in their rounds of five. Horvath now starting her round of six as Emma Lawson closing out her burpees on her round of five. Ten minute time cap here. Nice. Laura Horvath continues to keep that pace that she came out of the gate. They said round of five. Okay, what does that mean? You've only done 15 reps of both. But in round six and seven, you nearly match that with 13 apiece, and then we get to the round of eight. So like I said, this gets heavy and hard in a hurry. So don't waste your time too early with the smaller reps. It's, again, round seven is really where this event starts to take shape. And that's right where Laura Horvath is. This is her round of seven bar-facing burpees. Emma Lawson is on her deadlifts here in round number seven. And Laura Horvath continues to attack this workout getting set to move into her round of eight deadlifts. Now Horvath back to the barbell. Emma Lawson continuing to work her way through the burpees. Coming up after this matchup, we have our second throwdown between Justin Medeiros and Saxon Panchik. So you're going to want to stick around for that as Laura Horvath back to the burpees and closing out her round of eight. And you really see the difference of strengths and weaknesses between Emma Lawson and Laura Horvath. Horvath juts to get a no wrap. Now, the burpee standard here for this year is a little bit different. It's a two foot takeoff, but a one foot landing is allowed. So those of you guys that are watching at home understand that it has changed. The takeoff has not, but the landing has. Look at Laura Horvath and the speed she has on these deadlifts. A lot different than we saw from Emma Lawson, but it's not a huge surprise. You gotta remember, Emma Lawson is 17 years old. She is just learning really how to use her strength and to develop that. Laura Horvath has a few years under her belt as she is one of the stronger females in the field. And Laura Horvath has not slowed down so far. She is in her round of nine already. She'll do one round of 10 after this, then it's back down the ladder. As Emma Lawson is now in her round of nine on the deadlifts. It's so hard to stay above the bar after your last burpee and to just pick it up. But Laura is doing a masterful job, as we saw on that transition. Like I said before, you can lose a lot of time on the burpees, but it, even more from that transition from burpee to deadlift. Three and a half minutes have gone by, and Laura Horvath is in her round of 10 bar-facing burpees. Emma Lawson, 14 reps back of Horvath. 
And I, if I was going to give anyone a time to maybe step off the gas for a second, I would give it to this 10 burpees. If you want to be successful, you're going to have to be unbroken on the deadlifts. But the 10 burpees, the cresting of that hill, is that one moment where you can take a little bit off the gas. I'm not saying go slow, a little intensity off the gas before you get down into the round of nine. Orbath is now making the turn back down. This is her second round of nine. Important to note that the time cap is 10 minutes as we're just past the four minute mark. So it's 55 reps to get to 10, but 45 reps on the back half going nine down to one. With the 100 28 mark is when Laura Horvath will be done with her second round of nine. Then she'll move down to her second round of eight. And she pretty early in this workout grabbed a lead over Emma Lawson. And that has just widened as we have moved our way through 22.2. And where the lead's coming from, it's not on the bar facing burpees. It's actually on the deadlifts that Laura's doing. But now Laura's taking her first big break. And that was between a burpee. I thought she was resting for her deadlift where she's getting some a, a break at least is that Lawson is having to break up her deadlift sets where Laura Horvath has been going unbroken and quickly each set. This is the round of eight, second time for Horvath as now Emma Lawson as well on the left side of your screen. She is working her way back down. More than halfway through, 10 minute time cap, four and a half minutes remaining. And this is the first time that we see Laura Horvath kind of fall off that pace that she established early on. A very, I would say, unknown element of the burpee is how much it takes away from your core. If you want to really know what that feels like, mix something like a GHC sit up or a toes to bar with a burpee. And you'll be shocked how hard it is to actually contract and extend to get off of the floor from the burpee. The deadlift is going to do the same thing in the opposite fashion. And so this is one of those that's going to sneak up on you very quickly. We just have four minutes left. Horvath is well above the pace she needed to be at to get underneath that 10 minute mark. But now we're starting to see the compounding effect between the posterior midline fatigue and the anterior midline fatigue from the burpee. Horvath now into her second round of seven, a 10 rep lead over Emma Lawson with three and a half minutes to go now. Now Lawson, though she was about 16 reps behind Horvath at the halfway point, her burpee pace is actually a much faster pace than Horvath was on the back half. So even though she's taking maybe one break per set, she is making up time on the burpees. So it's not set in stone just yet. Emma Lawson within 11 reps of Laura Horvath. Horvath needs to get to the 158 rep mark to move into her round of six. Then Horvath taking big breaks during the burpees. Lawson taking a break during the deadlifts. And like I said, as we get closer and closer, right, this is 100 total reps if you were to finish this event for the deadlifts and the burpees. When you get down to the six down to one, that's only 21 reps left. Round of six for Laura Horvath. And she rifles through those deadlifts. And now six more bar facing burpees. Now the pace picking up a little bit more for Laura Horvath. As Laura's approaching her set of five, this is where I said the darkness sets in. You are max fatigue, max lactic acid. Max lung capacity, just absolutely smoked. But you have five, four, three, two, one left. Two minutes to go. This is where you embrace the darkness and finish towards the end. Horvath into her round of five. Less than two minutes to go. A total of 30 reps remain. Look at the top part of your screen, Emma Lawson. She was 12 back at about a minute ago, and she's cut down four reps on Laura Horvath. Yeah. 90 seconds as Emma Lawson 
is trying to reel in Laura Horvath, but she might run out of time. She did carve a couple reps off of that deficit, as you said, Chase, as Horvath is back to the barbell for her round of four. And your big moves need to be made on your big sets. The seven to seven, that's where this workout is won. That is where this workout can be lost. Once you get to about the four, three, two, one, you pretty much paved your way to the finish line from there. Less than a minute to go. Horvath with nine reps remaining. Her lead is back up to double digits over Emma Lawson. And now the round of two. And Laura Horvath has a chance here to finish inside the time cap. Two reps left. And Laura Horvath finishes 22.29. 31 unofficially make it 930.60 seconds as Emma Lawson is trying to get her last few reps in here. She has 10 remaining. Five seconds left. Lawson back to the barbell. And we have hit the time, and we'll have to wait to see what her official score is. Looks like she was four reps shy of finishing, but Laura Horvath digs into the reserve <laughs> fuel tank. That is not what I want to see. <laughs> and is After able to get like across that. the finish line inside the 10 minute time cap. Great performance from both of these athletes. Right off the bat, Laura came out blazing. Same with Emma Lawson at the start, but look at the speed that Horvath had on the deadlifts on the first half of this. But one thing we warned at the top of it is that this is not a front half event, this is a back half event. Those 55 reps of each on the lead up is going to set yourself up well or poorly for the back half. And we saw Emma Lawson starting to break up the deadlifts again in that meat part of the workout, that seven to seven round. Laura Horvath gave up a little ground there in round six and five, but once we got to the set of four, she turned it back on, finished the way she started, and that was enough to get her ahead of Emma Lawson here towards the end. But again, 10 minutes, Sean, is a tight, tight time cap for an event like this. Laura Horvath takes our first matchup. 9.31 for her. 930.06 officially. Emma Lawson four reps back, and Horvath and Lawson are cooling down here. They're going to talk to Derek Force here in just a second. But it was really interesting to see the two contrasting styles there. Like you said, one athlete really excelled. That's Laura Horvath on the barbell. And it was Emma Lawson who really made her money uh, on the burpees. She did, and, and there there is room to strategy or strategize in here. It isn't just a full go from the beginning and you have to hold that the whole time. There is enough time, not a lot of time, but there is enough time to maximize your strengths, minimize your weaknesses. So if you're not a great deadlifter, we saw Chuck say that, as you get to the mm -hmm. heavier sets, there is time to break it up. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna take a lot of the, you know, time under tension off of the barbell as long as, as long as, you can keep a steady pace on the burpees. And I think one of the things athletes tend to do in a format like this, this one to 10 pyramid style, is they get so psyched about the beginning part. Feels great, feels easy, I'm one, two, three, four, five, halfway there. Not no, so you're not. fast, yeah. not so fast. You go to five, you still got, uh, let me do 85 more mm. reps to go. So pacing that out early and saving a little bit for the back half is going to be the secret to this event. Let's send it down to Derek Forrest, who is with Emma Lawson and Laura Horvath. So we have your winner for 22.2, Laura Horvath. Laura, you were able to get under the time cap to finish this workout. Where was, what was the movement that you enjoyed in this one, if you could enjoy any of them? Oh, the deadlift for sure. The burpees are a trap. This whole workout is a trap. You look at it like 1 to 10, 10 to 1. Oh, it's not a lot of reps, but it's a lot of reps. Around 9, 8, 7 on the way back. It starts to hurt really bad. You just have to keep pushing. Emma, you were telling me for you it was your lower back. Yeah. 
uh, you know, the compounding movements between the deadlifts and the, and the burpees, just what's the advice you would give everybody else watching and how they would do this one? I thought I started off slow enough, but I didn't. <laughs> so um, I think you need to start a lot slower than you think and start bringing it up early and just try to keep moving. No slow transition. So I think that's what it really comes down to. Thank you very much. Your winner for 22.2, Laura Horvath. Don't go anywhere, everybody, because we have another matchup coming up. Justin Medeiros and Saxon Panchik and Matt Fraser joins us in the booth. The 22.2 announcement is sponsored by Rogue. Don't weaken. Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit. Thorn, the official supplement partner of CrossFit. And Erosti the official rapid recovery provider of CrossFit. Horvath and Lawson set the standard for 22.2, and a very high standard, mind you. Our men are up next, but before we bring them out, let's learn a little bit more about them in this feature presented by Noble. Justin Medeiros and Saxon Panchik know a lot about expectations. They also know how to live up to them. Panchik had expectations put on him based on his last name. His older brother, Scott, is one of the best and most consistent men to ever compete in the sport. But Saxon is quickly emerging from his sibling's shadow. Last year, he had a career best fifth place finish at the CrossFit Games. In 2022, Saxon is looking to earn his fifth straight trip to Madison. And if that happens, he has a chance to do something his older brother never did, finish on the podium. That is something Justin Medeiros has already accomplished twice. Medeiros went from newcomer to household name in the blink of an eye. He finished third at the games as a rookie in 2020. As a result, he was expected to be the heir apparent to Matt Fraser. Medeiros claimed the title of fittest on earth just one year later. As he has risen through the ranks of the men's division, so have the expectations put on him. Now that he's claimed the throne, he's expected to hang on to it. If he manages to do that, he will find himself in some pretty elite company with two of the greatest of all time. Justin Medeiros and Saxon Panchik know a lot about expectations. So far, both have lived up to them. This year, they hope to take the next step and exceed them. All righty, guys, what do you say we bring our men out onto the floor? Yeah? All righty. Coming from a long line of desirable genetics, 2021's fifth fittest man on earth, Saxon Panchi. is your reigning and defending fittest man on earth and birthday boy, I see we've got a sign over here, Justin Medeiros! I love it, you gotta give the hug to your dad there. But uh, these two men getting ready set uh, for 22.2. Justin, I wanna ask you this. First of all, I wanna say happy birthday, yeah. by the way. <laughs> but you're getting set to defend your very first title. What are the expectations going into 2022? Yeah, man, I mean, the, the goal every year is just to always improve and I wanna beat myself from last year. And last year, I won, so. <laughs> it's hard to beat that, right? Hard to beat that. Saxon, for you, careful how you answer this question, but your brothers are watching at home. Any bragging rights for beating them in this workout? There's always bragging rights. <laughs> um, and it's just setting the tone and letting them know what they need to beat. 
All right. Well, it's going to be fun to see these two throw down in 22.2. For more on the matchup, we're going to send it over to Sean and Chase. Justin Medeiros and Saxon Panchik, two men who finished in the top five at the CrossFit Games last year and two men who currently sit inside the top five on the Worldwide Open leaderboard. Last year, they finished different spots on the Worldwide Open. Pax, Saxon Panchik was fourth, Justin Medeiros 57th, but did go on to win the title of Fittest Man on Earth, something the guy joining us now knows a whole lot about. Matt Fraser in the booth. I feel like you, you're retired, but you're still working hard. What kind of things do you have on your plate right now? Uh, you know, a li little bit of everything, you know. Uh, you know, obviously, HWPO training, it was taking up a lot lot more time. That's where we're putting a ton of our priority. But, uh, you know, recently took on the the opportunity to, to coach some athletes. Mm -hmm. So we got Mal O'Brien and Jake Marconi living up in Vermont now. So they got good training partners. And, you know, that's been super, super exciting, getting to watch and coach Mal every single day. That's always a weird transition going from athlete to coach. What do you like most about that? You know, oddly enough, it wasn't weird at all. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I kind of fell into the role uh, very, very naturally. But it's uh, it, when, when you have an athlete like like Mal and Jake, you know, it makes life very easy. You know, they're incredibly coachable. They want to be in there. You're not having to bribe them to go harder or do more. Um, you know, it's a dream situation for a coach. Well, now that you have seen two very talented <laughs> athletes go through that, have you changed your recipe for success at all? And if so, how? I mean, it's it's going to get rough towards the, the end of that, and it's got to make sure it doesn't get it before that. So negative splitting the deadlifts, right, working your way up. We said roller coaster style. You're working your way up, cresting the hill, and then it's hands up all the way down <laughs> on the back half of this. Don't waste your time on the burpees. I said it, you don't need to sprint them. You just have to get good transitions and not that extra step of, pity, as I usually tell some of my athletes when they're looking up at the ceiling in between burpees and then five down to one, embrace the darkness. There's light at the end of the tunnel. You just got to get there as fast as you can. All right, these guys look ready. Let's get this thing kicked off. Back down to Adrian Bosman to get us started. Ten seconds. Saxon Panchik, Justin Medeiros, 22.2. We're going to go up, and then we're going back down. 200 total repetitions. Matt, when you first got to open it, you had your idea of what it was going to be like. After seeing Laura and Emma go, any other things you picked up for these guys? Yeah, I think I think for, for these two and this caliber of athlete, there's no pacing. Um, you know, I think for the, the regular gym goer, um, you know, you should be cautious on the way up. You know, that the sets of like one through seven on the way up are gonna be a trap. It's gonna get exponentially harder when, when you're going up to the peak. I think for these guys, it's 100 deadlifts at 225. It's 100 burpees. I think for them, it's put the pedal down and just hang on. Second of our two matchups is both athletes are in their rounds of five. I want to correct something we said earlier on the standards. The jump standard on the bar facing burpee is the same as it was in 2021. Don't have to go two feet. It's going to spread. It's going to speed some things up. Matt, have you played with that standard different than you, we have in the past? Yeah, you know, I've, I've played with standards of, you know, there, there's always a possibility of what if. What if they don't require this? What if they don't require that? Um, and it's kind of the same as, you know, training something like a, like a wall ball to a nine foot target. I don't do it often, but but it changes your cycle rate. It changes the effort going in, so you need to adjust your speed based off that. And so for here, it's like we're so ingrained. We've competed with one standard for so long, so it can feel odd doing doing the standard to almost like an easier version where it doesn't need to be a two-foot takeoff. And I think that can throw off a couple of people. So this kind of touches back to what I was talking about earlier of don't rush into the workout. As soon as you see the workout, go play with the standard. Walk through it. Practice not doing a two-foot takeoff. Tomorrow, practice miniature rounds and you know get more familiar with it with intensity. And then on Saturday, that's when you hit it full speed. Once you've already you're familiar with the new standard, so you don't need to think about it and constantly remind yourself as you're doing the workout. Justin Medeiros is into his round of eight, as is Saxon Panchik in the round of Six. Saxon got hit with a no rep that allowed Medeiros to open up a little bit of a lead on him, but now Saxon is starting to reel him in just a little bit as we are on our way up here. One to ten, then ten 
the nine back down to one, I should say. 200 total repetitions. Medeiros is not even halfway through as we approach the three-minute mark. And we said on the women's side, this is the meat rounds. These are the money rounds. That seven to seven, we said, is that, it, it, as you said, Matt, it's not necessarily go slow in the beginning, maybe not waste some time, but it's waiting till we get here where you really start to throttle down. Yeah, I think I, I think the commentary for the regular gym goers <laughs> versus these two individuals yeah. is completely different. I don't, I'd be shocked if we see Justin's pace slow at all. I'm willing to bet he's gonna to get to the set of 10 and then put down the hammer. And I mean, Saxon is in peak, peak shape right now. So I think, I mean, they both look phenomenal. They both don't look like they're fatigued. I think I think they're gonna put up some very impressive and scores that, scores that will hold their own on the leaderboard. Justin Medeiros is now into his round of 10 and Saxon Pancic is closing out his round of nine. So Medeiros able to open up a little bit more of a lead here as we are at the crest of the ladder. And now it'll be back down in numbers after Justin Medeiros completes these 10 bar facing verbies again. You don't have to have a two foot takeoff. Same standard that we had last year in the 2021 quarterfinals. Matt, you've worked with Justin. You've talked to him. You've been around him, trained with him. What makes him so special? Uh, I mean, it's kind of tough to, to pick one thing and where, where to start, you know. He's he's an incredibly impressive athlete. He's super young. I mean, he has such a long runway ahead of him, but he approaches things correctly. The biggest thing that stands out to me is, uh, you know, he won the games off the fi off the 57th place finish in the Open. You know, he is laser focused on his goal. He knows what his priority is and the priority is the games. It's not, it's not the Open. So, you know, he goes through flows with his training. Uh, some some point in his training, he's concerned about getting stronger and not being able to breathe heavy, but then when it, when the time's right, he starts shifting his training and peaking for the right time. Right now, he's on his way back down. Justin Medeiros is in his second round of nine bar-facing burpees. Saxon Panchik has managed to close the gap a bit here. Now just four reps back of Medeiros as we have now just five minutes remaining. Halfway through here, 22.2. I like said at the top of the show when the women were going, this is just a this is a nasty little couplet between the deadlift barbell pull from the floor and then the burpee push from the floor. Matt, when, when you're looking at this couplet between the two, we think complementary movements. Oh, it's push-pull a little bit. Not quite when you put these two together. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's, it's a lot of hinging. Um, I think efficiency is going to be key here. You know, if you watch Justin, he's not snapping both feet up at the same time. You know, stepping up out of your burpee, uh, you know, if you're doing it efficiently and quickly, they, they're they barely slower than jumping both feet up at the same time, but they use a fraction of the energy. The other thing I want to point out, Justin's doing a great job. He's changing directions every time he jumps over the bar. So he's not getting dizzy by the time he goes back to his deadlifts. And that, I think, after 100 reps, starts to add <laughs> yeah. up. Medeiros now done with his second round of seven deadlifts and into his second round of seven bar facing burpees. Saxon Panchik has now fallen back. He's eight reps behind Medeiros. And Matt nailed it. I mean, Justin Medeiros' pace, especially on the burpees, but the transition from burpee to deadlift is probably the most impressive thing because there's a lot of time where you can feel sorry for yourself stepping up from the last burpee and knowing how to pick up that bar. Yeah, I think, I think too, you have to factor in that, you know, Justin is a very, very good deadlifter. So this barbell is not even a 50% deadlift for him. So for him, it's not, he's not ever gonna fail a 225 deadlift, you know, not, not in this circumstance. Um, I mean, same with Saxon. So it's, you know, just keeping that throttle down, reminding yourself like, this will be over in a couple minutes. The pain will go away. I'll be, I'll be fist bumping my buddy, drinking water in a couple minutes with a nice little heart rate. 50% oh, of your deadlift. That would be a nice world to live in. <laughs> Medeiros is now into his second of five rounds, looking to get to the 180 mark, and then it should go pretty fast for him. Less than three minutes to go. 200 total repetitions is what these men need to complete to complete this workout inside that time cap. And Medeiros is well on his way towards doing that. And Saxon Panchik is putting up a good pace as well. I think it's still hard to forget. Yes, it's 50% of his deadlift. Yes, it's burpees. But the intensity that these athletes now have to display because of their ability is a lot different than say, you know, someone like me doing the workout where I just say, how far can I get in 10 minutes? Like, it's not easier just because they're fitter. 
No, I mean, when, the fitter you get, the faster you go. The pain, <laughs> ne the pain never gets less. <laughs> Four reps remaining for Justin Medeiros. Saxon Pantic is also on pace to finish well within the 10-minute time gap. Final rep for Medeiros is he's wow. going to take the matchup 7 wow. <laughs> <laughs> unofficially. My goodness. I mean, some of the times we heard about what was tested coming into this was maybe getting underneath that 10-minute mark, not the 8-minute mark. Saxon Panchik is going to finish as well, so three of the four athletes finish inside the 10-minute time cap, and that is something that we were told oh, might happen. <laughs> it's going to be close, but these two absolutely smashed. This workout, impressive efforts from both of them. And Justin Madera, 758.10 seconds. Saxon Panjigan at 826.9. 2.15 dudes. <laughs> unbelievable performance. And, you know, Matt, you called it. It's just, there's a way to look at it from this individual athlete side and maybe your casual athlete side. Yeah, so pa pacing for the, f for the defending champ is <laughs> going to be a little bit different than, than your regular affiliate. Just add a little bit of line there, and you got your racing, not for these athletes here. But everyone else watching, you know, we might want to use the P word when it comes to <laughs> pacing out this workout. Do not try that at home. <laughs> One more look, it just went down. It went, went down and both of these men had a, an aggressive pace out of the gates, and both of them able to hang on to it. But what was cool to see is that it wasn't out of control. It was just an intense, intense pace from start to start to finish. And you want to think about if you just gave them 10 and 10, how would you do that quickly? That's the pace they sustained all the way up through this. As we said, it's a hundred deadlifts, it's a hundred bar facing burpees, but Justin Medeiros' transitions were a thing of beauty. It was put the bar down and then I lay down on the ground as I do that. It was hop over the bar, set my feet and pick up the bar. And that is a lot of time you can save. In turn, not a lot of intensity that you need to add in to make up for that lost time. Both men finishing inside the 10 minute time cap. Justin Medeiros will do it the fastest and then Saxon Panchik was about 20 seconds behind him. Your results for our second matchup, Medeiros 753 now and Saxon Panchik at 822 and the two of them are with Derek Forrest. All right, your winner for 22.2, Justin Medeiros. <laughs> now, before the workout, we were talking about strategy and, you know, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, and that's something you wanted to do. Was that your game plan, and, and how were you able to, to break up your rest? Yeah, I know for me, I just wanted to, kind of similar to the first workout, I mean, you kind of found that round for the, that pace for the first round and see if you can hold that throughout the whole, the whole workout. So for me, I just really wanted to keep my reps the same speed and uh, keep that same pace and not too much of a drop off. So I was able to do that, so felt good. Saxon, in terms of cooling down from this workout, for you, for all the other athletes watching, how do you go about that moving forward? Hop on a bike five minutes and <laughs> hop on a foam roller. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. I wish I was doing that right now. Your winner for 22.2, Justin Medeiros. Thank you so much for joining us for the official announcement of 22.2. But stay seated, the cool down show is up next with Chase Ingram. Chase will be joined by our four athletes and Derek will be on hand to take questions from the audience. That's up next, stay tuned. The 22.2 announcement is sponsored by Monster Hydro, the official energy drink of the Noble CrossFit Games. Whoop, the official wearable of CrossFit. And Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. It's a really humbling experience to stand in front of 60 participants every weekend and shake their hands and share with them the love that we all have for CrossFit. And I think the transmission of culture is just an expression of our passion for CrossFit and our passion for the knowledge that we get to give to people and that experience we get to have every weekend. I don't think it's anything we have to think about. It's just something that's a byproduct of what we love to do.
Welcome into the Cool Down Show presented by Arosti. Chase Ingram is getting set to talk to the athletes who participated in 22.2. We'll hear from them in just a few moments. But I've got a special guest in Dr. Jason Garrett with Arosti. Jason, thanks for doing this. I want to talk about Arosti and what you guys are doing for athletes. For years, you guys have been helping athletes recover at the games. For those athletes, you've seen a workout similar to this at the games. How would you help them recover? So it's, it's real surprising. Obviously, the low back is fried. The glutes and hamstrings are wrecked. What's really, really important, though, is your hip flexors. Your hip flexors, because they hip hinge, allow you to open up, extend your hips. Those get completely locked up, especially when you go from a deadlift to a burpee. Getting up off the ground, staying low, staying in a crunch position, your back is just going to be super tight. If you don't address the hip flexors, it's going to stay tight forever. How about the everyday CrossFitter, someone like myself? How would you suggest we warm up and cool down for this workout? So a couple things. Make sure you get your heart rate up several times before the workout. The last thing you want to do is spike your heart rate during the workout because then you wreck, it's over. you got to start over, do another one later on. Um, really importantly, though, is do a wall stretch, kind of like the video showed earlier. Open up those hip flexors. Make sure they're working really smoothly because if they're tight, every lift is like the parking brake on. You don't want to have the parking brake on when you're doing 110 deadlifts and 110 burpees. What are you guys doing with your remote recovery, telehealth? Uh, what's the benefits of that for your clients? So amazingly, most people have either pain or dysfunction or injuries they don't fully understand. You can have access to a provider for a free evaluation, so at least you know what's causing my pain. Do I need treatment? Do I need to go somewhere else? Can I rest this? Um, from that, we're also offering a treatment plan with our Rossi Remote Recovery. It's all online, digital. You get to one-on-one, -on -one, interact with the provider, half off for any CrossFitter. So you identify as a CrossFitter. For the next few weeks, you get half off. It's a huge deal, amazing results. People get better really, really fast. Educating them on what's wrong with their injury makes a huge impact on them not catastrophizing their pain and allowing them to move more normally and get back in the box to, to do what they love. Awesome. We love our discount, so we'll certainly appreciate that. Thank you, Jason, for uh, speaking with me. It looks like Chase is ready to go. He's got all four athletes who participated in 22.2. I am with our athletes. First and foremost, Justin, happy birthday. Say uh, thank you to Saxon for giving you the win. Obviously, what a what a wonderful right. birthday present. What's that, Justin? You just turned no, no, no. 23. Yep. 22 is a pretty good year for you. Yours. We are now in year 22. How are we going to top this year? You do? If you don't, no worries. Anybody's got it. Been off, but I mean, just like last year, my goal is just to be fitter than I was in 2021. So it's going into this year. I just want to be able to beat myself from last year. As long as I can do that, like I know I'm going to be really happy with how the season ends. Laura, I want to ask you a question: Is first year at the CrossFit Games, you get second place. 19 and 20, tough years. How much did those? help build yourself as an athlete and competitor for 2021? Oh, I think they definitely helped a lot. I think your low moments define you more than your high moments. So I'm looking back, I'm really grateful for those years, but also I'm ready to like move on and like l learn from those years, but also to like build the future. Saxon, I got a question for you is, you just made the move to Nashville. This is a new season. Got fifth last year at the games. I know he's standing right here, but what are our goals here coming in for 2022? Hand him the mic. <laughs> um, kind of like what Justin said, you know, beat yourself from last year. And I think that's all that you can do. And um, as long as you're doing that, that's all you can ask for from yourself. Saxon, Derek has a question for you from one of our audience members. Yeah, I've got a question from Jocelyn. She is a, a, with CrossFit CEO, and the question is for Saxon. Uh, how's being a new dad and the twins? Uh, being a dad and having twins, it's amazing. Um, and how much joy they bring me um, is even more amazing. So I'm very grateful for that, and yeah, I'm just enjoying every moment. Emma, I have a question for you. You went teenage last year, 16 to 17, we won. We've had a few teenagers come out of that division, make a splash last year. Obviously, Mal O'Brien, Emma Carries, Haley Adams is one that makes that transition. This year's a little bit different as far as what happens out of the quarterfinals. You have to pick a path. We can't really go two directions. Have we thought about which direction we'd shoot for this year? Uh, you know, it's been a lot to think about just because 
Well, it's a, it's a big step, but um, I think I, I proved to myself last year that, um, you know, I can, I was really close to qualifying in the individual, so I think if I continue putting in the work and the time, um, that's the main goal this year, to try to go as individual, so. All right. Yeah. I love it. All right, I'll put it out there. That's right. <laughs> we got a question for Justin Medeiros. I've got Siobhan with me from CrossFit Shred. She's got a question for Justin. Hi, Justin. I just love to know how you find it capable to stay so calm, although there's all these people and yelling. How do you stick to your game plan without getting frazzled and kind of letting it all go out the window? Yeah, no, that's definitely something that's like had to been practice. I, uh, I mean, I grew up wrestling and stuff, and you're in a stadium uh, all day. There's wrestling mats all over, and uh, you're wrestling five or six times a day, so you got to be able to really learn, be able how to check in to, for your wrestling match, and then be able to check out and recover. So uh, just for me, it's just really dialing in and focusing on what I'm doing and uh, knowing that I'm doing it with a purpose and uh, kind of allows you just to focus in and know that I'm going to give this workout everything I have, and just at the end of it, I'll know I'll be happy. So, yeah, no problem. Laura, I'll come back to you for one more question. Over the years, from what I've seen from you, this is shaping up to be one of your best, best and maybe healthiest off-seasons after your second place finish in 2021. You said before is that you have a goal to not just make it back to the games and get on the podium, but to win the CrossFit Games, but specifically, which I admire, is while T is still competing. How is that they're there as still competing in your aspirations of getting on top of the podium with Tia there? I mean, obviously, after last year's games, everyone thought that she was going to retire, and I was personally happy that she didn't, like, because, I don't know, I just, I think if you compete against the best and you win, that's, like, that's amazing, and you don't want to have, like, a, like, a, you want to have a healthy and good competition. It's like, I don't think it's fun to, like, win. I mean, obviously, it's fun, but it's a different kind of fun when you dominate, so, so like, so dominant. I think that Emma just said, like, she won multiple times the team division and she would like to measure herself against the yeah. best and I think I think that's amazing and I understand why she wants to do that. I, I absolutely love it. We have a, one more question for Justin Medeiros. I have easy with 11 element. What's your question? Well, first of all, Feliz Cumpleaños, Justin. Woo! And my question is, where's the birthday party at today? Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't do anything crazy, but I'm definitely going to go get some crumble cookie today and uh, kind of live it up there. So, <laughs> heck yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> uh, one more question for Saxon. You're coming into your own as an athlete, right? I am. The last name is now a name of tradition because of you and your brothers, what you guys have done together. What's it like going into a season, right? You guys all started CrossFit together, right? You, Spencer, and Scott. Is it weird having a year where Scott's really not a part of that competition season for you? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely weird um, not having him there, but, you know, it's the Pantric name, and we're just going to keep it rolling. It's awesome. Well, Emma, we have uh, one more question for you from one of our audience members. Yeah, this is Ryan, and she's got a question for Emma. I was wondering how old you were when you started CrossFit. Um, I was seven when I first went to a CrossFit gym, but I started competing um, when I was 13. So that's when I started, uh, yeah, training to compete. That's a seven years yeah. old. My yeah. goodness! <laughs> My goodness. Wow. <laughs> so Emma, with I need a question for with the experience that you have, a decade, which is mind-blowing right yeah. what was it like growing up with fitness as a part of your life from such a young age uh, well I've always been uh, pretty active um, I just love the lifestyle of CrossFit um, yeah I just really enjoy fitness and you know being outside and doing it with the community and everything so I've, I've really it's been a huge part of my life and I really enjoyed it I got one question this one is for Laura Yes, this is Aranza, and she's uh, at GGR. She's got a question for Laura. Hi, Laura. Oh, you got it. So I'm um, at the moment currently dealing with cervical stenosis. I had surgery done about three months ago, and I'm just wondering how you deal with I remember you had like a really strong back injury. So how do you deal with mentally? You can't hear? <laughs> Man, 
mentally? I think, uh, I, I mean, when I got injured, I never really had like a really serious injury where I needed like surgery, but whenever I injured myself, I just took time off. I made sure I recovered and then only went back to intensity and like range of motion with the injury. So I think just take your time and um, just heal and then start working out again. Well, everyone, that is going to do it for us here on the Cool Down Show, but the conversation does not end now. Myself and all four athletes will be going live on CrossFit Games' YouTube channel for the CrossFit Games podcast. But until then, we want to thank Dr. Jason Garrett, Rogue Fitness, for supplying the peak of open locations for Chase Ingram, Sean Woodland, Derek Forrest, Caleb Banfield, open. 22.2 is open and ready for fitness. We'll see you guys soon. week it's the final test of the open and we are live from two locations on two different sides of the atlantic two longtime affiliates square off in a david versus goliath matchup on one side the crossfit queen of iceland and her army of games veterans on the other an upstart group of athletes from northern tennessee the journey comes to an end in week three of the open 22.3, live from Hendersonville, Tennessee, and Reykjavik, Iceland.